morning. This is Sarah Honeydew with JNS Biblical Productions on June 15, 1908. Today we are going to introduce to you a man very close to God and has a love for humanity. He started his career as an oat farmer and with God's help was successful to get the oats out to America's breakfast table. Please welcome to JNS, Mr. Henry Parsons Crowell. Good morning. Pleasure nice to meet to you. Meet you. <clears throat> Mr. Crowell, I understand you believe that the Lord helped you throughout your life. Is this correct? Miss Honeydew, you see, I had just had a high school diploma when I came down with tuberculosis as a young man, and my doctor advised me to go out west to get some fresh air to help get rid of my tuberculosis. And sure enough, by the age of 25, in 1880, I was a well man. I bought a farm in Iowa and was very successful, but that and the fact that my farm uh, survived a tornado uh, brought me to the Lord and I realized that that's the path that I must follow. Oh. Wow, that is amazing. So then what? Well, I was offered a lot more than what I bought that for farm for, so I went back to Cleveland, and my uncle was kind enough to introduce me to a banker who loaned me money to buy a 14,000-acre ranch in South Dakota. Wow. Henry, now how did you succeed with other owners that had failed in operating a Quaker mill, I believe you call it? It was much hard work, but... I hired a man to run the daily operations so that I could focus on marketing my oats. I brought my business problems to the Lord, something that was very unusual at the time in Christianity. Hmm. Could you please explain that to us? Well, uh, I believe that God led me to the, the Quaker Mill and the oats business so that I could pursue a stewardship as described by Jesus in his parables regarding serving the Lord via stewardships. Now, oats at that time were sold in general stores in big open barrels set on the floor, attracting worms and insects. This was very unsanitary and unpalatable, so I decided I could solve both of those problems by packaging the oats in a nice sealed cardboard container and put up off the floor on shelves. The idea worked. Uh, then you are the first like we have today then. Absolutely. Uh, I and a few other of the millers in my area formed a voluntary association, and we called it uh, Oatmeal, Oatmeal Miller's Association, if I recall correctly. And then later, that became the General American Cereal Company. Hmm, that's really cool. So this is really getting interesting. Um, how did you get the oats on a shelf then? Well, again, divine inspiration. Um, it was during the depression of 1893 and uh, beef was quite expensive. I came up with the idea of promoting the oats as an affordable, wholesome, and nutritious alternative to beef. Uh, it has lots of protein and besides that, I encouraged the housewives to demand or at least ask their grocers to supply them with the Quaker Oats brand. And I promoted things by, oh, getting celebrity endorsements and creating contests where you'd send in the box tops and win prizes. And sure enough, it worked. So let's get to the religious convictions. How did they play a part in your success? Well, my wife Susan and I uh, enjoyed some financial prosperity in Chicago, and we were well known. Both in we shared the gospel, both in social as well as business circles, when the opportunity presented itself. 
And as a result, many corporate giants came to the Lord. We've also given to over 100 Christian organizations, including the Moody Bible Institute. And I've found over the years that the more we donated to Christian causes, the more prosperity we enjoyed. Wow, that's really impressive. So, do you have any favorite Bible passages that inspired you? Oh, not a specific passage, but I think it all comes down to one word, faith. And I am reminded of the verse that without faith, one cannot please God. So, I read the New Testament every day. That's awesome. Hi. Uh, you reminded me of ask, seek, and knock. Ask for Quaker Oats. Seek Quaker Oats. Knock, and you shall receive Quaker Oats. I was very inspired by what you said. And, you know, I realized I have never tasted your new cereal. Um, may I try some Quaker Oats? Why, certainly. Uh, Miss Sedgway, is it? Yes. Okay. I, I want you to know how nutritious and wholesome these oats are. They're filled with protein, vitamins B1 and B12, and riboflavin, and calcium. Mm -hmm. All in this one box. But an added uh, benefit is this logo of the Quaker here, mm -hmm. which signifies trust, integrity, quality, and strength. May I pour you some? Yes, please. Okay. Well, let's get Miss Honeydew some of these delicious oats. Is that enough, or would you oh, like more? That's good. Okay. Thank you. And how about you, Miss Sedgway? Are you feeling good. very hungry this uh, morning? <laughs> that's good. Okay, maybe just a little bit okay. more. And then I think I'll enjoy some with you, if you don't mind. Because I haven't had some for a few hours. And would you care for some cream, Miss yes. Honeydew and Sedgway? You can have some as well. Is that enough? A little bit more. Okay. Thank you. I see. Oh, yes. Sometimes I eat mine without cream. See, that's why you should put me in the cup. <laughs> An old farmer is helped by the Lord. He is showing us that in John 11, 22, that it applies. Even now, I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you an ask, seek, and knock. From the parable of the friend at midnight in Luke 11, 5 to 10. Thank you, Henry, for letting us visit you in your home. It is my pleasure. This is Sarah Honeydew for JNS Biblical saying, Every time you eat Quaker Oats, think of how the Lord helped Henry bring the cereal to your breakfast table. And also, if you want to learn more, you can read his book, The Cereal Tycoon. And good morning.